First, you pause the video and read the question carefully. A solid insulating sphere of net charge minus 2q is at the center of the cavity of a conducting shell of net charge 3q. The radii are given. We are asked to find the electric field at different regions. First, we need to interpret the question. This is a case of spherical symmetry and hence we can use Gauss's law to evaluate the electric field. So it's an application of Gauss's law. As we do all the time, we can start the development by drawing a diagram of the situation. We have a uniformly charged solid sphere of radius A concentric to a spherical metallic shell of inner radius B and outer radius C. The net charge of minus 2q is uniformly distributed in the sphere. The shell's net charge of minus 3q will reside at the surface as it is a conducting one. As I said before, we can use the Gauss's law here. Gauss's law can be stated like this. The surface integral of electric field E is equal to the charge enclosed on epsilon 0 where epsilon zero is the permittivity of free space, which is a constant. Even the Gauss's law is true for all the surfaces, it can be used to find the electric field only if we can find a symmetry in the problem. Hence, the first step in evaluating the electric field using Gauss's law is to identify the symmetry and to draw an imaginary appropriate Gaussian surface at the region where we want to evaluate the electric field. This question is a clear case of spherical symmetry as all the charges are distributed symmetric to a center point. Hence, the Gaussian surface is a sphere in this case and I'm going to draw a Gaussian surface in one region where I want to find the electric field. For finding the electric field at point 1, distant R1 from the center, I draw a sphere of radius R1 at that point. We should use the dotted lines for that. Now, we should evaluate the gases law. We would first evaluate the surface integral E dot di on the left side. So, the second step in evaluating the problem is to evaluate the left side of the integral on the gases law. For finding that, we need to know how electric field and area are oriented. We can draw a few field lines to help us with that. The field lines from the central negative sphere is pointing radially inward and the shell is pointing radially outward as the field lines start from the positive charge and end on the negative charge. So we can see that electric field at any point on the surface is perpendicular to the surf surface element as indicated by the field lines. The direction of the area vector is usually along the normal to the surface element. So we can see that they are parallel to one another. So we can write integral E dot dA equals integral E dA cos theta and which is equal to integral E dA as theta is 0 and then cos theta is 1. Now, each point on the sphere is symmetric to charge distribution and hence E has same magnitude everywhere on the surface. So we can then take electric field E out of the integral and now the equation becomes E integral dA which is E times the total area of the chosen Gaussian surface and which is equal to EA. Having evaluated the left side of Gauss's law, our next step is to evaluate the right side of the equation. So, as a third step, we, um, we will work out the charge enclosed by the surface. Finally, we can substitute 2 and 3 into the Gauss's law to rearrange the equation and evaluate E. Now we are going to the evaluation step. First, we will find the electric field at position 1 where R is less than A. We already have drawn a Gaussian surface there and the surface integral there is E1 A1 which is equal to A1, E1 4 pi R1 square where 4 pi R1 square is the surface area of the Gaussian sphere of radius R1. 
the third step in the evaluation step was to find the enclosed charge. The charge is uniformly distributed throughout the volume of the sphere and hence the total charge is the volume charge density times the volume of the Gaussian surface, which is rho V. The rho is the volume charge density and here it is minus 2 Q on 4 by 3 pi A cube. As we know that a charge minus 2 Q is uniformly distributed in the sphere of radius A. Hence, the charge enclosed is um, the volume charge density times the volume of the Gaussian sphere and which can be simplified as this. Now we can substitute these two things in Gauss's law and get E uh, 1 4 pi R1 square equals minus 2 Q R1 cube on A cube epsilon 0. We can rearrange this equation to get E1 as minus Q 2 pi A cube epsilon 0 times R1. The terms in the bracket are constants. And hence we can say that the electric field magnitude increases as we move away from the center in region 1. Now we can calculate the electric field in the cavity between the sphere and the shell. The gases law can be evaluated as we did before. Draw a Gaussian surface at point 2, distant R2 from the center and integrate um, and the integral on the left side can be evaluated as before and it is e2 a2 which is equal to e2 4 pi r2 square now we we should calculate the charge enclosed by the surface which is simply minus 2q because the charge on the sphere is the only charge present inside this new gaussian surface so the gases law gives us e2 4 pi r2 square equals the minus 2q on epsilon 0, we can rearrange this equation to get e2 as minus q on 2 pi epsilon 0 r2 square. Now, what is the electric field inside the conductor between B and C? Is that the same electric field as in part B, assuming all charges on the metallic conductor is residing on the outer surface? It won't be, as then it means that the field inside the metallic conductor is not zero, which can't be right. What exactly is happening then? The charge at the center, central sphere, will be attracting an equal number of positive charges to the inner surface of the shell, and hence we have 2q plus 2q on the inner surface of the shell, and the rest of charge plus q will be residing on the outer surface. The field can then be calculated using the same method as we did before by evaluating the Gauss's law. A Gaussian surface is drawn at point uh, R3 away from the center where E3 has, has to be evaluated. Now E3 is 0 as the net charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface is 0. The net charge enclosed is minus 2q plus 2q which is equal to 0. Now let's calculate the electric field outside the shell, say at point 4, at distance R4, R4 from the center. The treatment is exactly similar as we just seen. Evaluate the left side as E4A4, uh, 4, which is equal to E4, 4 pi R4 square, which is equal to minus 2Q plus 3Q on epsilon 0, giving us Q on epsilon 0, or the electric field outside the shell is Q on 4 pi epsilon 0, R4 square. Now that we have found the electric field at various locations, electric field at various regions can be written as the following. Let's draw an electric field versus distance of this situation. E1, the field inside the sphere is proportional to minus R, whereas E2, the field in the cavity between the sphere and the shell is proportional to minus 1 on R square. E3, field inside the conducting part of the shell is 0 and E4 the field outside the shell is proportional to 1 and R square. Finally we need to do a quick assessment. Looking at the plot we can see that the field inside the central sphere is linearly increasing with distance. As it, and it makes sense as the charge 
enclosed by the Gaussian surface is proportional to volume and hence on R cube. So, as E is proportional to the enclosed charge, it will be in increasing with uh, R cube. Whereas, following the um, Coulomb's law, E should be decreasing by S1 on R square as the distance from the center increases. From B and C, there's no charge enclosed and hence it will have only the charge on the sphere inside at any time and it will be decreased as the square of the distance following the Coulomb's law. But in these two cases, the electric field is pointing towards the center and that's on the negative axis. From C to D, there's no field and that's expected as the field inside the conductor should be zero. Finally, any point outside the shell Will, be treat, will treat the total spherical distribution as a point charge and it is equivalent to the field of a point charge and that's true too. So our answer is making much sense.